Hey there. Okay, so in this form, in this video, we are going to look at the reduction formulas, and from experience, I know that students really don't like this, um, probably because they don't get it, they 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 can't do it, um, but it's really really not that bad, and I hope to show that in the f uh, next few videos. First of all, before we can really understand it, there's just three things that's incredibly important. First of all, the definitions of the ratios okay and it's that sign your rear cos x rays tan your exterior okay these x y and r formulas are very important so we have that sine of an angle is equal to y over r we have that cos of that angle is equal to uh, x over r and finally we have that tan of an angle is equal to y over x okay that's the first important thing if you know this you are a third of the way to understanding reduction formulas the second thing that's very important to understand is what the Cartesian plane looks like let me just write Cartesian plane the Cartesian plane okay the Cartesian plane. Okay, what do I mean by the C Cartesian plane? Well, this is the Cartesian plane and what's important here is that you know that this is the positive x-axis, that is the positive y-axis, this is the negative x-axis and that is the negative y-axis. Okay, and now you're two-thirds of the way of understanding all of this okay finally the third thing you have to know is how angles are represented okay on the Cartesian plane okay how angles are represented and that's not difficult so any angle um, first of all angles are measured uh, positive angles are measured uh, anti-clockwise okay that's the first important thing and the second important thing is that when we go anti-clockwise okay we know that this is 90 degrees so that is 90 degree this is a complete 180 degrees so towards the negative x-axis is 180 degrees if we go another 90 degrees we're at 270 degrees and plus another 90 degrees brings us to 360 degrees and then we start over just adding 90 degrees each time will take me into a new quadrant this is called quadrant 1 because that's where my angles start this is called quadrant 2 okay this is called quadrant 3 and that is called quadrant 4 so that's just the second uh, is know the major axis know the major major axis okay know the major axis 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 and 360 actually the most important ones are these two for this video or for understanding this work these two are most important okay so that if we have an angle in the first quadrant it would be an acute angle it would be an angle that is less than 90 degrees if we have an angle in the second quadrant okay and we want to represent that angle with an acute angle if this is theta then this angle if this is theta then this angle is 180 degrees minus theta so that angles in the second quadrant is 180 degrees minus if I want to represent it in the third quadrant and that is theta then I go all the way up to 180 and a little bit more so that's 180 plus theta if I want to represent it in the fourth quadrant I go all the way around to 360 and back a bit in the anti-clockwise direction 
So 360 degrees minus theta. Now the reason why this is important is because what we want to go and try and do is find what is the output of each ratio in each quadrant. Okay, so if I were to look at the output of each ratio in each quadrant, what, do I, what am I talking about? I'm talking about will that output be a positive number or a negative number? First of all, let's just draw our Cartesian plane um, where we know that this is the positive y-axis, okay, the positive x-axis, the negative y-axis, and the negative x-axis, and then we place in our main, this is 0 plus, okay, this is 180 degrees minus, this is 180 degrees plus, and this is 360 degrees minus. Only these are important. The 90 plus, 90 minus we'll look at a little bit later. For now these are very important. So if we look at an angle um, in the first quadrant, then it's simply represented by the coordinates x comma y. Okay? And we see that x is positive and y is positive. So if we were to have sine in this, which is x, uh, sorry, y positive over r. r will always be positive, then we see that in the first quadrant sine will always be positive, okay, because we have a positive divided by a positive, okay. How about cos? Cos is positive x because the x is on the positive side and positive r, so that also gives me a positive value. So if I'm just looking at theta, then sine of theta and cos of theta will always be positive. That is if theta is less than 90 degrees, an acute angle. And it's no different for tan, because tan is y positive over x positive, because both y and x are positive values, and that gives us in the end a positive value result. So in the first quadrant all of the values, let's write that in a nice and purple, all of the ratios are positive. Let's look at an angle in the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant we have an angle, now remember this is the angle theta, or this is the angle that we're looking at, the observed angle. If this is theta, notice how theta is a 90, uh, less than 90 degrees theta is an acute angle, okay, however we have an obtuse angle as our observed angle and that obtuse angle is called 180 degrees minus this theta, okay, so if we have sine of 180 degrees minus theta, we notice that this point which is negative, x is on the negative, and y is on the positive side, we're still above the x-axis, then we see that sine is positive y over positive r. Okay, y is positive. So the result of sine will still be positive. How about cos? Cos of this observed angle is 180 degrees minus theta is negative x over positive r and that will give me a negative value. So cos in the second quadrant will give me a negative output. Whatever the answer is, it's going to be negative. How about tan? Okay, tan of 180 degrees minus theta, in other words tan of an angle that's in the second quadrant and now I'm running out of space so uh, let me write here. Okay, that would give me positive y over negative x, or positive y over negative x, and we know that positive divided by negative would give me a negative answer. So tan in, of an angle that is more than, 100, uh, more than 90, less than 180, will always give me a negative output. Okay, let's look at the next quadrant. In the next quadrant, we know that the angle that we are making with the x-axis is this angle. That's the angle that we're making with the x-axis. So the observed angle from the positive x-axis goes all the way to 180 plus a little bit more. So it's 180 plus. So this time the coordinate 
will be a negative x value as well as a negative y value. Okay, let's have a look at the outcome of the ratio. So for a 180 degree angle plus an angle less than 90 degrees, a acute angle, this would be in the third quadrant. That would be a negative y over a positive r. So sine in the third quadrant would be uh, negative. How about cos? Cos in the third quadrant, in other words, an angle that's more than 180 degrees, okay, is x negative over r positive, okay, which gives me again a negative answer. How about tan? Tan also going to be negative. Tan of an angle that's more than 180 degrees will be negative y over negative x. And this time we see, ah, oh, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Okay, so here we get that all of the ratios are negative except for tan. So in this quadrant we have that tan is positive. Okay, the previous one, all of them were negative. Sin, uh, cos was negative, tan was negative, sine, however, was positive. So in this quadrant we have that sine is positive. And now into the last quadrant. First of all, we look at what angle is made with the x-axis. There's our angle made with the x-axis. That would be theta. And to measure the observed angle, we go from the positive x-axis in a clockwise, anti-clockwise direction all the way to there. And how big is that angle? Well, it's all the way to 360 and back a little bit. Going in the opposite direction means we're subtracting the angle. So this would be 360 degrees minus theta. That's the observed angle. So if we have, and remember, theta is less than 90 degrees. It's acute. So 360 degrees minus theta will be somewhere between 270 degrees and 360. That would be an angle in the fourth quadrant. So if I talk about an angle in the fourth quadrant, sorry, I talk about an angle that is 360 degrees minus some acute angle. And this for sine is, um, let's just write the coordinate there, the coordinate is a positive x and a negative y and a negative y. So we will have a negative y over a positive r and um, that will give me a negative value. For cos we will have 360 degrees minus this and we see that x this time is positive. So this is the quadrant where cos is going to be positive. Tan however is three for an angle in the fourth quadrant would be negative y over positive x which will still be negative and that means that in the fourth quadrant all the angles are negative with the exception of cos so if I just put all of this together you see cos is positive here all of them are positive there, sine is positive there, and tan is positive here. So that this is where we get what is called the cast diagram. The cast diagram. And the cast diagram says cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. All of them are positive in the first quadrant. Sine is positive in the th uh, second quadrant, and tan is positive in the third quadrant. And then when you do draw the um, cast diagram, just include the 180 degrees minus, the 180 degree plus, and the 360 degree minus on the cast diagram. And this is this is a summary of everything that we did um, in, in the past few videos. If you can commit this to memory, you should be fine. If you can't commit it to memory, that's fine. You can go figure it out along the way. But that's it for now. In the next video, we'll look at applying this.